Hey guys, Evan here, and I've got some pretty amazing real estate news for you. I've got the inside scoop on some real estate soon to be on the market that is out of this world. Now, whether you live in the city, on the coast, or in the mountains, I'm here to tell you about a place where no one's ever lived before. The moon. You may wonder, why would anyone want to live on the moon? We want to explore the moon and to be able to live on the moon because there are a lot of uh, possibilities of bringing benefits back to the Earth. A another reason is for exploration, for science. Uh, it enables, getting good at living on the moon enables us to uh, be prepared to live other places like Mars or other planets. Living on the moon is usually something we only see in movies, and it's also a pretty popular topic in science fiction books and TV shows. But as technology advances and concerns about our future on Earth increase, the idea of a lunar outpost seems like a great idea. <laughs> Perhaps some backup insurance for us Earthlings. American astronauts haven't been to the moon since 1972. And the last time NASA visited Earth's closest neighbor, it was only for short visits. This time, NASA plans to stay longer. NASA is designing and building models of what may become the first lunar outpost. And because the moon is so close, it's a great stepping stone for future plans to send people even further, to Mars. This base will be built in small steps by four-person crews over several seven-day visits. The first mission will begin with a small structure and a short visit. Over time, the base will grow, building up with more and more power, mobile rovers, and living quarters. And as the outposts get larger, the crews will be able to stay longer until some crews may be able to vacation on the moon for 180 day visits. Now, this is all very exciting, but there are some issues to consider. In many ways, the moon will be a home like no other. The air that surrounds Earth acts as a nice blanket to keep us warm and comfy. But the moon, without that blanket of air, gets much, much colder than Earth, and then much, much hotter than Earth. On the side of the moon facing the sun, temperatures can reach 121 degrees Celsius. That's about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than boiling water. On the side facing away from the sun, it is very cold, negative 157 degrees Celsius, or negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a burr with a capital B. The lunar outpost will have to withstand temperature extremes. One of the structures NASA's considering for a lunar outpost is actually inflatable. In a lot of ways, it looks like a backyard moon bounce. Structures, like the one seen here, would be used for research, testing, storage, and living. It is very important for habitats to be lightweight and durable. Everything you send from the Earth to the Moon uses hardware and fuel to get there. To land a half a kilogram, or about one pound of supplies on the surface of the Moon, you need 57 kilograms, or 125 pounds of hardware and fuel to get it there. Inflatables are lightweight. An inflatable habitat is also easy to set up. It only takes four crew members and a few hours to do that. You may wonder, what other types of structures are being considered? Well, let's ask an expert. Two basic types. There's what we call a, a hard shell, and then there's the inflatable. Now, these can be all different size and shapes, but they're, they're constrained by whatever your launch system is. An inflatable is great because you put it in the shroud, and once you get it to your destination, you just sort of fill it with air. That pressurized environment it expands, and you get more space per kilogram of launched system. Whereas if you launch it as a whole integrated section, it's basically like a mobile home. It's there, you just open the door and you're ready to live. So there's trades between the two. Uh, you know, if you value as much space per possible per kilogram of launch vehicle, then you go with the inflatable. Uh, if you want to make it move in ready, as soon as the crew gets there, you want something hard shell. So in the architecture for uh, building up the outpost on the moon, we're looking at both and combinations of those to see what the best fit is. Hmm. What are some other considerations to keep in mind for lunar habitats? You also have to bring supplies with you. You have to be able to have multi, multiple uses for the items you bring. You want to use that thing several times to the point it's not usable for anything. Uh, because everything you bring from Earth costs so much. It's, it's, it's worth more than gold because it costs so much money and takes so much time and so much energy to get it there. So everything is used a multitude of times. NASA is testing some of these habitat structures at Earth's harshest, coldest, and most isolated real estate, Antarctica. Despite all the challenges NASA faces in returning to the moon, the wealth and knowledge gained by establishing a lunar outpost is a huge step for all people. This is history in the making. While it is still important to continue to explore our world, there are countless discoveries to be made beyond our world. Robots are our scouts for exploration, but they can't replace humans. America feels it is time for a permanent human presence on the moon. 
There's much to be learned by living on the moon. Building this outpost may be the first step to adding a human presence on Mars and beyond. That's the inside scoop. We're going back to the moon. Don't you want to join us?